Do you know that feeling when you're watching a very boring movie for like two hours and you finally think it's going to end soon and then you check the time and you realize you're only halfway through the entire freaking movie? Welcome to the story of TPGY merging with the VBox. Today we're going to talk about the new SEC filing, we're going to talk about the reasons for the delay and then I'm going to give you my opinion about the future of the stock price. So let's go! Because your patience has been tested so much and will continue to be tested for a few months probably, I'm going to add some pictures of cute kittens every now and then. This is the first one of a kitten that just read through the new SEC filing and discovered the deadline has been extended again. Because yes, the outside date, the deadline for this merger between TBGY and DVBox has been extended from August 6th until <laughs> December 31st of 2021. This is way more than I anticipated, I thought this might take a few Few weeks more or potentially one month more but definitely not like four months more. And in the SEC filing we notice that it might take even a little bit longer because here we can read that TPGY and NG Seller, which is the parent company of EVBox, expect to work toward completing the business combination in late 2021 or during the first half of 2022. So why do we need this extension? Well, we are seeing a continued delay in the, the delivery of the audited financial statements for EVBox Group. And with regards to those financial statements, we're not just talking anymore about only the year 2020, but right now we apparently also need the interim unaudited financial statements for the first half of this year 2021. So the six months ended June 30th of 2021. And to top it off, we might also need to restate the financial statements for EVBox for the year 2019. Because right here it says that the existing audited financial statements of EVBox for the year ended December 31st uh, of 2019 might require restatements before they can actually complete the audited financial statements for the year 2020. So it's quite insane the things we need. We need maybe a restatement of 2019, we need the full year of 2020, and we need the first half of 2021. And because of this entire horror show, what we are seeing right now is that TPGY does not consider the previously released financial and operating guidance for EVBox Group for future periods to be reliable indicators of EVBox Group's expected future financial performance. So basically that means that because of all those restatements, maybe all of those audits need to be restated, we don't really know if the guidance that we received in investor presentations, for example, is actually correct or not. It could be entirely different. And we might even be looking at a revised business plan and a revised financial forecast for EV Box Group. So what are some of the potential reasons for this delay? Well, first of all, according to Vihar, which had a pretty solid comment one day ago, NG has a new CEO since the beginning of this year. NG is the parent company of EVBox, so NG is going to sell EVBox to TPGY, hopefully at some point in the future. Uh, if we still are alive. And uh, yeah, that could be the case that the new CEO of NG wants a better deal for selling EV box. It could also be the case that while well, the French government has a stake in NG and there might be some regulation issues over here. And of course, keep in mind that NG is a European company, TPGY is an American company. American companies need to comply with certain regulations, for example, gap accounting principles, and NG isn't really used to complying to these uh, with these gap accounting principles. So that could be quite difficult for sure. And of course, keep in mind, again, EVBox is a part of NG, it might be a little bit difficult to carve out and uh, to carve out EV box out of NG of course. But yeah, are these solid reasons for this taking so so long? I'm not entirely sure about that. It just looks like someone is royally screwing things up. Now hopefully I'm going to be able to get an interview with the CEO of EV box in a couple of years and we can just laugh about the entire situation. Now what might happen if the deal is not going to go through? Well, one of the things that is going to happen is that EVBox, or actually NG, will need to pay quite a bit of money, 12 million euros, if there is no deal for any reason by any party. So also if TPGY says we are not going to have this deal anymore, then EVBox, or actually NG, is going to have to pay 12 million euros. Now this could be even increased to 15 million euros, so 3 million euros extra, if the company RG, uh, NG, of course, uh, EV Box, is not going to be able to deliver their financial statements before October 22nd, and that combined with no deal at the end. 
To soften the blow a little bit, here's a kitten that's representing the TPGY investors feeling a little bit stuck right now, or at least the retail investors like you and me, because it looks like the institutional investors are getting the opportunity to abandon the ship. Because in one of the SEC filings, we can also read that the investors in the private placements are going to be released from their obligations. Now, my interpretation of this is as follows, that the institutional investors, so the pipe investors, don't really need to keep their shares in lockup anymore, and they can sell their shares whenever they want. Now, the question is whether they are going to do so or not. Apart from that, these institutional investors bought their shares for $10 per share. Now, I'm not entirely sure if they can now sell their shares for $11, which is more or less the price of TPGY right now, or just for $10. Now, it's probably going to be the latter, so I think that if the pipe investors, if the institutional investors want to sell their shares, then they probably will have to do so for $10 per share. Now, in total, we're talking about quite a bit of money, $325 million, actually, that could be potentially sold by these institutional investors, by these pipe investors. So you have 100 million from forward purchase agreements and also 225 million from pipe investors. So if that happens, if all of the institutions are going to sell their shares, then I believe TPGY can look for new institutional investors that want to invest up to $325 million in total. Now, I believe the worst, worst, worst case scenario is that everyone sells their shares, so $325 million in shares, TPGY cannot find any new institutional investors, and then they potentially would have $325 million less in cash. Now, I'm not entirely sure what TPGY would do in that case. Maybe they're going to sell more shares to retail investors like you and me, but honestly, I don't really have any idea what would happen in such a situation. So just like many, many people in the comment section and my email inbox, actually, you might wonder, okay, this is all very confusing. What should I do right now? Am I just going to jump ship just like this cute kitten wants to do and just sell my shares for a loss? Well, of course, I can decide for you. You always need to make your own decision based on the information that you have. But I am going to tell you what I am going to do. So what am I going to do exactly? Well, I kind of agree with this comment over here that if they were not aiming to close the deal, why would they actually postpone? Because rationality says they would have cut the deal by now if they didn't think it was actually feasible. And I would want to add to that. Yeah, why would they extend the deadline again? Why would they invest more time and more money in the next couple of of months why would they offer new pipe investment opportunities it really looks like both parties still really want to close the deal so that is why i still believe that it is more likely that we are going to see a merger than that we are not going to see a merger if i would have to put a percentage on that i think it's about like 75 percent likely that we will still see a merger whether it's going to be in december or like the first half of 2022 and like 25 percent that we're not going to see a merger now of course there is an opportunity cost right now because I could of course sell my shares and use the money for something else during the next couple of months because I think that the stock is likely going to stay trading because between $10 and $11 per share for the next couple of months. It's likely going to take a few months before we're actually going to get a definitive news about the merger. But personally, I'm not going to do so. I'm not going to sell my shares. I've been waiting this long and I'm just going to wait a few more months. But I can definitely understand if you would sell your shares right now and put the money somewhere else for just a little while for a few weeks or a few months. It's just, yeah, super annoying and a really, really testing our patience. So that's the latest update about TPGY. Now, if if you haven't watched my latest video about TPGY, which I released last week, definitely do so. It's right over here. It contains a little bit of additional fundamental analysis about EV box, so definitely check it out, of course. And if you have already done so, then maybe check out my mission, which is right over here. And with that being said, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye!